Okay, I am making this video to kind of help you see on the camera what I'm talking about when you are changing your shutter speed and changing your aperture. Um, and then when you kind of have to go in and figure out what your ISO might be. So on your tables, I have a couple different objects that you can rearrange. So when I just lightly tap my button, my screen starts to focus on whatever object is straight in front of me. So right now I have the duck and then back there I have the skull. So right now if we look at my camera screen, I have a, a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second and a aperture of 3.4. So when you are in a 1 200th, that's a decent um, speed for you to be holding it with your hands. Um, and you can see I have those green arrows right here which are showing you that that is the number I am changing when I spin my wheel over here. You can see the number gets smaller and the image gets brighter. When I go the other way, my number gets bigger and my screen gets darker. Okay, um, that's because your lens is opening smaller, so it can't let in enough light. Oh, you can see my battery's gonna die. Um, so let's go to a brightness that looks like it's okay. So 1 50th, that means you would probably need a tripod because your hands are gonna shake even just a little bit. Um, so you never wanna have it below 200 or even 250 when you're holding it with your hands. So let's keep it at a 250. But now I'm seeing, let's take a picture, let's see. My image is pretty dark, okay? And I don't want that. So if I'm gonna have it at one and 250th of a second, um, I either need to change my aperture or my ISO or both. So let's go to aperture first. So to switch it over to aperture, we're gonna push this button right here, it kinda looks like binoculars, and you can see my green arrows have now switched to this side, and so now when I move my bar, my light changes again. So remembering what we talked about, um, your aperture is, um, you know, how much is going to be in focus. If you have a small number, let's take a picture, okay, compared to if you have a bigger number, much darker. So to be able to see that, we're gonna have to mess with our ISO. So I'm gonna hit this ISO button. Um, because we're not using a flash and there's not a, you know, a giant light source, we're gonna just move it until we start to see, you know, some light on our screen. Sure, let's do that. So I'm gonna close out of ISO. I'm at 8.5 for my aperture. Let's see. Okay. Too dark. There we go. That was our first image. Doesn't look like it's super in focus. But we go back to this one. And see. So as you can see, we don't have a ton of options for our aperture on here. We can go down to a 3.4. We can go up to an 8.0. So your low number is meaning only what's right in front is going to be in focus, super in focus. So let's take a look at that one. Super in focus but our skull back here is not. And let's say we want a little bit more of our skull in focus, then we have to raise our aperture up. But as you can see, as I raise my aperture up, again, the darkness comes back. So if I wanna combat that, I go back to my ISO and I could raise it up. Or you could bring in another light source. You could bring a lamp over here. You could get a flash. Um, those are other things you can do so you don't have to raise your ISO so you don't get those specklies in the background because remember we don't want those. Um, 
But let's get down here next to our duck again. And let's compare. So we have our duck. So we definitely got a little bit lighter with our ISO. And I would say we do have a little bit more in focus. If we zoom in, our skull, a little bit more in focus now with our aperture of 8.0. And then let's go look at our other one. This was our aperture of 3.4. Definitely not as much in focus. So that is how you would be changing your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO to kind of make your picture work. Um, it's a little bit easier, you know, if your objects were right next to each other. Um, but if we have an object in front and then an object in back and we want them both to be in focus, that is when your aperture is really high. Um, if we only wanted the duck in focus, we could have a lower aperture and now it's really bright. Maybe a little too bright for what I would like. So one thing you could do is raise your shutter speed up. So once I start to raise my shutter speed, it gets a little darker, a little darker, a little darker. I kind of like this one. So let's see. Pretty good. I'm okay with that. Um, so again, the little green arrows are around what's going to be changing. If I hit the binocular button, it'll switch me over. And then to get my ISO, I push this ISO button. And again, I'm turning the wheel. And then to close out of ISO, I'm going to click it again and it goes away. Um, a couple other questions we had, this display button, when this screen is on, if you want to be able to look through here and see all of this, you would hit that display button. I don't know if you can see in there. You can kind of see now all of those, um, the aperture and the shutter speed is now in there. If I want it back on this screen, I hit my display button again. Sometimes it takes a minute. There we go. And it comes back. Um, let's see, anything else on here we want to talk about? Um, also remember you want to be in the manual mode when you are changing shutter speed and aperture. Um, you don't have to be in manual mode when you're just doing regular pictures. You could keep it in auto. Um, a lot of times the camera does a pretty decent job of helping figure out what things should be pretty in focus. But if you're wanting only the duck in focus, that's when you would have to probably change your, um, your settings yourself and use the manual mode. Or if you're doing something with light, like we're gonna be doing here in a little bit, where you want a light trail of something in your picture, you'll definitely have to use your shutter speed um, in manual mode. So let me know if you have any questions.